Welcome back to the shop, friends. So I'm ditching AGM batteries for good. Let's switch these batteries out and talk about why. This wiring job is something I am definitely not, not proud of. Uh, it's something I'm working on fixing. I have a plan for it, but today we're just gonna, we're just gonna get the battery swapped out and talk about why. So why are we, wow, that terminal was loose. Huh, we'll have to fix that now. So why are we switching out batteries? Why are we ditching AGM altogether in this vehicle? I found a few things out that's interesting over the years. One of them being that it seems like that the AGM batteries just don't last as long, at least in this particular vehicle. Now I have had a few problems I've had to remedy in the past. I've done many parasitic draw tests. There's always none or at least nothing above normal, right? There's always a little bit because you have computers and stuff, but there's nothing above normal. It's very low. Um, I did have to replace the computer in mine because Jeeps have, Chrysler specifically really, have the voltage regulator built into the computer. When that goes bad, funky things happen. So I had to replace the computer to replace the voltage regulator. Uh, I've got a new alternator. So everything is tested and working correctly, but the one thing I found out was the voltage. When I say voltage, I mean the lack thereof. So, and I'll show you this when I pull the battery out the requirements. So some batteries, or not some batteries, but all batteries, depending on the technology used, require different charging requirements in order to charge properly. My Jeep specifically charges at 13.5 volts, right on the dot, 13.5. According to Jeep, that's within spec and that's where it should be. The problem in lies is that this battery, this AGM battery, needs 13.8 to like 14.6 to fully charge. Now when I had the solar on the Jeep, it was perfectly fine because I could set up the solar panel to charge the battery to that. And the Jeep set outside all the time, so the battery is getting a nice full charge. But what I've come to find out is that if you don't have an, an alternator or a vehicle capable of charging an AGM battery, then the AGM battery just never really gets the full, never really gets the full charge. Okay, let me get you in here and show you where it says this on the battery. Right there. So if you see this, we have a charge of 13.8 to 14.6 volts. That's to get it to absorb and equalize and all that stuff. I don't, I don't know everything about it, but I know you've got to get in between there when you're fully charging the battery. And then once the battery is charged, you need a float in between 13.4 and 13.6 volts. For the float, my Jeep is just fine, right? Because it's 13.5 volts. But really what happens is, since it never reaches 13.8, this thing never really gets a full charge. Okay, let's get this guy in here. Oh, wrong way. So with all that, here's what I think is going on. I think my Jeep is never fully charging that battery, and because it's not fully charging the AGM style batteries, it's slowly degrading itself. And over a year, over two years, over the course of time, as I use it, the battery just loses capacity. Uh, and I think that's the problem. Now, these lead acid batteries, your standard batteries that's been coming in cars for a long time, uh, these need 13.5 volts just right around to charge and they're a little bit more forgiving. AGM uh, really does take a special alternator, special charger that I'm finding. Now there is a way around this. If you're really diligent about it and about once a week you put a battery tender on it and let that charge overnight, you'll probably get away with prolonging the battery life. But for me, what I've been finding out is that when we're on trips, the AGM just does not perform as well. And the reason it doesn't perform as well uh, is simply due to the fact that my Jeep is not fully charging it. Now, when I had the solar on it, not a problem. The solar charged it all the way up all the time. That was fantastic. But without the solar on there, uh, maintaining that, that AGM battery, the Jeep's just not capable of it. So that's my spiel about batteries and what I think is going on here. As a side note, we're gonna replace these terminals with these guys. I kind of keep these around as spares just in case, um, just in case I have a bad terminal go bad. 
<laughs> as we saw. But let's put some Loctite on here. Keep this from rattling apart. That has a whole heck of a lot. It's okay. The, the bigger the glob, the better the job. Isn't that right? Okay, we'll put that on there like that. Boy, I'm not happy with that wiring job at all. This is, to be honest, I'm actually kind of embarrassed about this. This is something that I've needed to tackle for quite a while and I just, I have not. So that might be the next big project is rewiring all of this and getting it corrected because it's just, it's an awful mess. It's something that's happened over time and something I need to correct. But we're almost done. Just one last thing I wanted to show you. Uh, make sure you pick up this stuff right here. I'll see if I can link it for you below if you can't find it. It's called battery terminal spray. And uh, basically what it does, it's this red goo, it's anti-corrosion, and you just give a little, little spray on your terminals and it turns everything nice and red, uh, which is kind of cool, I guess. But all it does is pr protect it from corrosion, from acid and everything else that can go on there. It protects all your connections to your bolts and everything. If you noticed, uh, this guy, while very worn out and beat up, uh, it has no corrosion on it. And the reason is because I use these on every single battery I put in on all of our cars. Um, I use this stuff and it protects the terminals really well. It also protects your little ring terminals, your little connections. It's just good stuff to have. So pick some of that up. If you're going to switch your battery out, it'll save your connections and save you headaches in the future. And there you can see the little shot of what the battery terminal spray does. Just nice anti-corrosion protecting. Ignore the wiring. I know it's really bad. It's, it's something I'm working on. drop something again. <laughs> it never fails. So everything starts, everything runs. We did a good job. I didn't short anything, thankfully, even with all those wires in there that I just, I really need to clean up. That is really embarrassing. Um, but I do have a good idea. I do have something coming to clean that up. It's just, uh, it's taken me a little while to get started on it because it's, wiring is a tedious job and clearly I'm not that great at it. So, but what did we learn? Well. What, over these years of using AGM batteries, what I've learned is that your vehicle really, really, um, really has to be designed to run them, right? Or you have to get really good at charging the battery, whether you pull it out of the vehicle and charge it, you put a good battery tender on it, something like that. Or if you have a solar system on your vehicle that can charge the battery, that's a good way to go too, because then that battery is being maintained. But as it was, right, we removed the, we removed the roof rack and so I got rid of my solar option in the Jeep. Uh, the battery is just not being tended like it was. And I kind of figured out that once the voltage, once I figured out the whole voltage deal with the battery, what it requires and what my Jeep is putting out, then it was quite apparent that the Jeep is just not charging the battery all the way. And that's just no good. And I think that just degrades the battery life as time goes on and it's really hard on them. Now I'm not knocking AGM batteries. They're fantastic batteries. If you have a way to charge it, go for it. They don't, um, they don't spill liquid, you can mount them any way, they don't off gas, they tend to hold more power than your standard lead acid battery. Uh, some of them can be a bit lighter weight, you can get them all sorts of shapes and sizes. I think they're really good, and it's unfortunate I can't run it in the Jeep reliably uh, because my vehicle just can't charge it right. So that's my spiel on it. Um, I hope this is some, something for you to think about if you're looking at AGM batteries. Uh, just know you can run them, but you're gonna to have to figure out a charging solution if your vehicle wasn't meant for it. So with that guys, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you liked the video. If you do, please like it. If you like what's going on on the channel, subscribe down below. And with that, we'll see you in the next video.